Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make, um, can you probably say that? Uh, as you know, those of you that have been following, I have been focusing on uh, meals and delicacies that have been eaten in different parts of Africa. And today I am moving on from Nigeria to Mozambique. And my Mozambican meal that I'm bringing for you today is croquetes y salada. And that is basically um, a deep fried mashed potato crumbed thing <laughs> um, and salad that I will be marinating the Mozambican way or at least the way that I learned how they marinate their salads. And uh, let's begin. Okay. And I'm gonna use the garlic paste as well. Can we begin? Okay. And so to begin making our croquette dish, we are going to be using some rosemary, a sprig of rosemary. This is plastic. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. We're going to be using a sprig of rosemary, two sprigs of thyme, just because I, I really like thyme. And we'll also be using some salt to flavor it. And since we are focusing on using fresh herbs, the thing I like about croquette dish, you can show my face. The thing I like about croquette is that you can spice it up the way that you like. Other people prefer using cilantro when they're making it for the fresh herb elements. Other people would prefer using, well, my mom prefers using parsley, but I, I don't really want to use parsley. I want to use something with, with power. So in here we have our, our wet mix that we're going to be making. And we have a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and a quarter cup of flour. And we're going to be mixing that up. Having it added some salt, I'm also going to be adding in some salt in there. Add in, be generous with the salt because <laughs> you'll think, you think. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's about a pinch of salt. And to that, I am going to be mixing in some milk. Preferably, you should be using the unsweetened one, but I, I don't have that on hand, so I'm using the regular one that has a little bit of sweetness, but that's fine. Because it doesn't really impart that much of its flavor um, into the croquette dish. You know, like you taste soy milk, so it's fine if you have that inside. Just mixing in some milk. We want to make this liquidy. We're adding in a quarter cup of milk and some water as well that I'll be getting to thin it out. I don't want to add too much soy milk. Um, I'm afraid it's going to make it a little bit sweet, you know. So I'm adding in some milk as well. Half pots milk and water to thin it out. The cup shows when you cook that, right? That's fine. Okay. Now that it's a nice slurry, and for those of you that don't know what a slurry is, it's basically just water and flour. You leave it to sit. You don't have to leave it to sit, it's just we're moving on to our next step. And we'll also be adding in some spring onion into our croquette dish for that onion flavor. This is actually from the garden. This is actually from the garden. Um, my mom planted it. Again, she has a green thumb. So we'll be using some of this lovely green onion in our croquette dish to give it that nice green onion flavor. And to make our croquette dish, we need some potatoes. Here I have some potatoes that were boiled. And I'm going to be mashing these up. Seven small potatoes or um, three to four medium potatoes that I'm going to be mashing up. You want to make sure that they're really soft so that they can easily get mashed. And you're just going to mash that up. Make sure it's a dry, as dry as you can make it so that you can shape the potatoes much easier. Now that our potato is mashed, we're also going to be adding in our dried herbs. I prefer to add it in now because it's the, the potatoes are still hot. So... It will help to um, get the essential oils in these and some of the flavor in there. I don't want the stem, so I'm just going to take that off. Ooh, see those? Those little guys there? That is our spring onion. And I am going to be using... Grabbing it right there. So we can start making our croquette dish. Next, I'll be chopping up my green onion that I got from the garden. <laughs> okay, I 
found that the best way to chop up green onions is by folding it like this, just because it's very long and it's how I learned how to chop up spinach as well. I just fold them into bunches. I put a, a smaller leaf into a bigger leaf. You've seen, there's a video where I made a spinach salad and I showed you. Then I chop it up like that. See? Okay, now that our green onion is chopped up, I will say this is about a tablespoon or so of green onion chopped. Adding that in, all of it. I'm also going to be adding in some garlic paste, not too much, just a teaspoon. We want that flavor, flavor, that flavor, flavor. And that's all the spicing that you're going to be adding into this. And now you give it a mix. Why it's important that it's dry because it'll be easier to shape if you want it to be crumbly you don't want it to be like a smooth silky looking kind of situation the only ingredient wet ingredient that i will be adding in here however is some butter and this is the butter that i'll be using <laughs> the one that i've been using and don't mind me, I'm going to be using this knife to get some butter. You just need a teaspoon of butter, you don't need a lot, because um, you don't even need the butter really. I just like the flavor that it adds, it adds another dimension of flavor into this, which makes it really nice and homey and delicious. My mom also likes to add cheese in here or she'll add in parmesan and because i don't eat cheese adding in that butter gives it still that nice yellow color and that flavor that little interesting flavor that the butter has like as if it has dairy you know okay and just taste it for salt perfect 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 I'm just gonna mash it up one more time. I am gonna put this into a bowl and then keep it in the fridge, chill it for about 30 minutes. And then when it's done, this is the bowl that I'll be using. When it's chilled, it'll be ready to be rolled into bowls and fried. So I'm sure you guys are wondering what these two slices of bread were for. It's not to make a sandwich, a starch and starch sandwich, no. Um, As you can hear, it's really dry. And that's because our breadcrumbs are almost finished and I don't think it'll be enough to make this croquette dish, which is a very important layer, I believe. It gives it that nice crisp. So I have decided to make my own. And in order to make that, what you need to do is to put it in the microwave for a few seconds and leave it out to cool down and then it'll become really hard and then you blend it up. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Other people also use graters. Other people also put it in an oven to toast it. This is the method we'll be using. And now we're going to blend our, our bread. <laughs> A tablespoon to shape them. Some people like to shape them into small little logs. I'm gonna shape them into balls because that's what I'm comfortable with. And then when they're done, I'm gonna place them onto these plates so that I can fry them. We need one dry hand and one wet hand. This will be our Dry hand, that will be our wet hand that we have chosen. So what we're gonna do is, we're first gonna make the balls and then we're gonna roll it in the wet and then we're gonna roll it in the dry. All right, now that we've made our four, we are going to transfer this to our cooking station where we're gonna fry these for, again, two to three minutes on each side until it's nice and golden and then we'll take it out. Okay. Right where you actually have to cook the beans. I'm gonna drop this in. One, two, three. For deep frying, the rule of thumb is that you should use um, any odorless and flavorless vegetable oil that you can find. But I'm using the mixed. Um, 
I'm using this oil because it's blended and yeah, I don't mind the the, the oil of flavor if there even is. See, the oil is hot so it's crisping up really quickly. Which is fine because the potatoes are cooked. I'm not cooking anything really. So this is actually <laughs> gonna take less time than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. And once they're nice and golden on each side, you are going to take it out. This is a beautiful color. A little more crisp than I usually have it, but I don't mind because I like crisp a lot. Put it onto a paper towel or a dishcloth or whatever that you have, what have you. And yep, these, the rest are nice and golden. Look at this, yeah, this is the color I usually go for. Not so much there, but it's fine. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Let that drip. Then, next. And this last one, for demonstrative purposes, I'll be showing you um, how it's originally made with cheese inside. So I'm just gonna cut a block of cheese, I'm gonna put it inside, and then I'll show you what it looks like on, in the end. It looks really yummy. I'm sure you've seen those things with stuffed cheese in them. It looks really good. Um, hopefully South Africa will eventually catch up and get vegan cheese that's melty and smelty like that so I'm gonna put in a block of cheese and I'm gonna give this one to my mom but I won't eat it because you know I'm paying homage to my Mozambique inside so I'll be back this is the cheese I'll be using I decided to use both because I used to like the flavor of Gouda and then I like the stretchiness of mozzarella you can use either or if you do eat cheese so I'll be cutting a small block of the mozzarella, small block, and a small block of the powder. See, this is how small you usually put them. You cut them really, really tiny, then you put them in, and then you take your potato. Take your potato, right? And before you make it into a bowl, you make a small little ditch. That's where you're gonna lay the, the little cheeses. I think this is a little bit too big. I'm just gonna put it, make a small cheese sandwich. Yeah, make a small cheese sandwich. And then you do your best to cover that up so that it's in the center. There you go. Put in a small little stem of rosemary so I don't get confused. I really don't want to get confused and mistakenly eat the cheese one. Okay, now we're done with our croquettes. This made um, 10 croquettes in total. Now to make the salad, it's just simple ingredients really. We're just going to be using some cucumber, some tomato, and a head of lettuce. Okay, and now we're going to be making our marinade. I'll be using a lemon that I'm gonna roll to get the juice out. Okay. And now we're just gonna slice that. Mm. We're using our hands so that we can catch the seeds because we don't need seeds. We don't need the seeds. We don't need them. We're gonna get as much juice as we can. Hello, Uncle Chief. Uh -uh. Well, I'll just fast forward it actually. I'll just, I'll just fast forward it so it won't show that there won't be any sound. Okay. <laughs> you don't want me to have my face to appear in your, your, uh, your Instagram. Sure. What do they call it? Sorry? You don't want my face to appear in your Instagram. My Insta, this is not your Twitter. Insta, YouTube. What is it that you're doing with your whatever it is? For our croquette dish, we're going to make a dipping sauce because oh, why not? And to make that, we have a teaspoon of the jalapeno paste, a teaspoon of the thick and creamy mayonnaise. This is vegan. Um, you can use whatever you prefer. You're adding in two teaspoons of that. We'll also be adding in. Some of this 
I'm gonna make it really spicy, so I'll also be adding in some of these. These are pickles, pickled jalapenos that we'll be adding in as well. Just a little bit to give it a little bit of a kick, just a little bit. Okay. To kick it up a notch, I'll also be adding in this rosemary and olive seasoning. And I'm just gonna be adding in just a little bit to also complement the rosemary that we put in the croquettes themselves. That's our spicy mayo. And to serve, we are gonna be have, uh, having two of our croquettes. I just wanna show you the cheese one. Which one is the cheese? Oh, this one. I just wanna show you the cheese one, how it's smelty. See how it stretches. That's what it looks like on the inside. The gouda didn't melt that much, but that's fine. Uncle Ichi, what you're eating now are called croquette dish. It's a Mozambican, it's a Mozambican dish. Okay. You can try. Yeah, How do I dip do it in there? I dip it here. Yes. <laughs> what do you think? Mm. <laughs> can I take all home? <laughs> You can, I'm done filming. Huh? You can because I'm done filming. Fantastic. You like this it? This is nice. You like it? Too much. <laughs> it's not too spicy. Where's mommy? Can you please go down there and get more taking them home. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> and there you have it. That's a very simple way of let me just get the plate. Of making croquettes. Um, I'm just gonna finish this for breakfast because I haven't eaten yet and I hope that you make it. It's very easy and um, let me know how you spice yours and if you do make it and have a lovely day. Thank you for watching. Bye!